Hi, chemistry friend. My name is Miss Vital, and I'll be your chemistry teacher this year. I'm so excited to have you in my class. Before each class, your homework is to watch a short video like this one. When watching the video, you should be taking notes. While you take notes, make sure you have a Regents Chemistry reference table and a scientific not graphing calculator. When you're taking notes, you can choose to either take notes on the guided note sheet provided by me or take notes in your own notebook. No matter what, take thorough notes and keep them organized. Your notebooks will be checked. The advantage of using the guided notes is that at the end of each video, there will be some questions for you to answer. Those questions are already typed out for you on the guided notes but you can also just take those in your notebook if you prefer. Once you've finished watching each video, open the corresponding Google Form in Google Classroom. There you'll find some simple comprehension questions for you to answer. In order to answer these questions, you may need to have a Regents Chemistry Reference Table and a scientific non-graphing calculator. After answering the simple questions, then you'll have the opportunity to either provide a summary of what you've learned or ask questions that you still need clarification for. We'll discuss them in class. I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Hi class, welcome to the first lesson of chemistry. In this lesson, we are going to look at and identify the base units of measurement and convert between metric units of measurement. It's important to remember that here in science, we use the SI system or metric system of measurement. No Fahrenheit or inches for us. Now you'll be watching many videos as we move throughout this course. And as you watch this video and every other video, you want to make sure that you're following along and filling in the notes on the guided handouts you've been provided. Additionally, you want to make sure that when you watch these videos, you have the same tools you'll have with you in the classroom which include a scientific calculator and a chemistry reference table. Lastly, remember that as you move through this video, there will be some questions asked of you. Answer those questions to the best of your ability. Your guided notes and your answers to these questions will be graded. Since this is our first lesson in chemistry, it's important to understand what is chemistry Chemistry is defined as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Now, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. If something has both mass and volume, we may have learned in middle school that it will also have density. So we can say matter is anything that has density. You might recall from middle school that all matter is made up of atoms some atoms have greater density than others. Here you can see that copper is a more dense atom than aluminum, but the matter is all made up of tiny particles called atoms. Now, chemistry is not only the study of matter, but it looks at the change it undergoes. And that change could either be a physical change where the matter is simply rearranged but its identity, its formula, and its names are constant. For instance, when you freeze water, you still have water. So freezing is an example of a physical change. You can see here in this image the three phases of water. You should already know that to change a phase of water, you add heat. These changes are called physical changes because you can see water, H2O, a molecule that has one red atom of oxygen and two white atoms of hydrogen is unchanged. Only the physical arrangement of the particles is changed, but the identity of the particles, their name, and their formula, and their properties, like the ability to put out fire, are constant. Or matter can undergo a chemical change. That's a change that makes or breaks chemical bonds. We'll look at chemical changes such as burning throughout the year. 
Chemistry, like most other sciences, involves experimentation. When we carry out experiments, we have to measure the quantities of matter or material that we use. We're going to calculate results and compare those numbers to known numbers or to our hypothesis. In all science, all measurements must include a number or quantity and a unit that describes what that number is. Here you can see a few number and units that accompany measurements. Now, some of the units you might be familiar with, but all of the units that we'll use in this class will be found on reference table D. Now you might know that gram measures mass, but did you mo know that mole measures amount or joule measures measures energy. Burning, also called combustion in chemistry, is a good example of a chemical change. When burning, you begin with wood, and you burn it and turn it into ash. This is an irreversible process. You can see that the chemical formulas and the particles that make up the molecules change in burning. You begin with a molecule of carbon and hydrogen and pure oxygen and you end with carbon dioxide and water. So notice how the formulas changed, the molecules changed, and their names changed. Now we're going to talk about the power of 10 number line. The powers of 10 are very important in the metric system. Most measurements have a prefix indicating the power of 10 and a suffix indicating the type of measurement. For instance, a kilojoule is 10 to the power of 3 joules or units of energy. Look at these two masses, 10 grams and 10 milligrams. Based on their suffix g, we know that they are both masses according to reference table d. Now 10 grams has no prefix. It is no power of 10. It is 10 to the 0, which is equal to 1, or a base unit. Now a milligram is 10 to the minus 3, so a milligram is 1,000 times smaller than a gram. Most of the medicine we take is prescribed in milligrams and almost never in grams. If you accidentally took a gram when you were supposed to take a milligram, you would be taking 1,000 times greater dose than was prescribed. There are many ways to convert between metric units of measurement, though I have found making and utilizing a power of 10 number line to be the easiest technique. Write down these three steps so you know how to use the power of 10 number line. The easiest way to make the power of 10 number line is to start with reference table C and simply turn it so that it is on its side so the powers of 10 are down at the bottom. With your reference table oriented like this, you can see the makings of the number line. Now one important difference between the number line that you will use and the number line that is just your reference table turned on its side is that it's important to have one tick for every power of 10. So notice on your reference table you go from a 10 to the third down to a 10 to the first and there are no actual ticks for the measurements in between. It is important that like the number line at the bottom here there's one tick for each and every number. It is not important, however, for you to know the prefix name associated with a tick not listed on reference table C. Again, what we have here is a number line from the greatest power of 10, 10 to the third power, to the smallest power of 10, 10 to the negative 12th power, making sure that a tick is provided for each number in between. Our base unit, our unit without any prefix, like a meter, liter, or gram, 
also known as 10 to the 0 power, must be included. Now there's a mnemonic device that some people like to use to remember the order of the powers of 10. But again, as long as you turn your reference table on its side, so the spine of the reference table is at the bottom of your desk, you should be able to get this in the correct order. The mnemonic device reads, King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk with one, two, three monks, one, two, three nuns, and one, two, three priests. When using the, the mnemonic device, each word corresponds with a prefix. In addition, when we get to the smaller units, it's important that we say three monks, one, two, three nuns, and one, two, three priests, because we need those ticks for the power of ten, even though they do not correspond with a prefix. Let's discuss how we'll use the power of ten number line with three examples. The first thing we need to do is decide our starting and ending points. In this first example, we will begin with the milliliter and end with a liter. Down on our number line, we see that milli corresponds with 10 to the negative third power. And liter has no prefix, so it's a base unit, or a 10 to the zero. That means we are going to need to move our decimal place one, two, three spaces. Now since we're starting at milli and we're moving towards liter, we're going to actually move our decimal place three spaces to the left. In the number 68, our decimal point is actually here, to the right of the number. And if we move the decimal place three spaces to the left, we'll go one, two, and now we're out of space. So we'll add a zero and drop our decimal point. So our answer is 0 0.068. In chemistry, it is good practice to place the leading zero for numbers less than one. We are going to use the exact same number line and the exact same technique for the next two conversions. Let's begin with the conversion from nanograms to milligrams. We can see that a nano is synonymous with 10 to the negative 9, and milli is synonymous with 10 to the negative 3. So we must move our decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces to the left. Since the decimal point begins here, we're simply going to have to add more zeros until we move the desired number of spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll drop our decimal, and it's always good to add a leading zero. To make sure that the next measurement shows how this technique can be used to make numbers both larger and smaller in unit, let's make a little change to the problem first. Let's change picometers to centimeters. Now when we look at our number line, if we want to move from centimeters to millimeters, we can see that they are only one space apart. But to move from a centimeter to a millimeter, we're going to have to move to the right. So we'll move our decimal place one spot to the right. Since our decimal spot begins to the right of this number, we're going to have to add one more zero and drop our decimal point to the right. Now you try a few practice problems and see if you've mastered this conversion. Now it is time for you to go and sign into Google Classroom. Find your chemistry class. Then complete the attached homework, which is a Google form. Make sure you submit your homework on time, as no late homework is accepted in this class. See you tomorrow in class.